it was a kiss move. Keep it simple, stupid. How much do you think that you got altogether? Uh, over 25 years, uh, you know, we actually cheated casinos out of, say, $25 million. How did you never get caught? The basic reason uh, is that I knew when to stop and I wasn't greedy. Uh, you know, I, I knew when I had a lot of heat. There was one point in time in Las Vegas when uh, I'm known for this particular move uh, called uh, Savannah like Savannah, Georgia, but it was actually named after the, uh, a stripper in a, in, a, in a titty bar who was actually giving us lap dances when we thought of the move. But um, we just um, knew, because uh, uh, I was doing that particular Savannah move, and there was a lot of heat on me because everybody in the uh, surveillance uh, business and all the, uh, the gaming commission in, in Las Vegas uh, gaming control board, uh, they, they all knew I was the one cheating, but they couldn't figure out what I was doing. You know, it's kind of like rubbing their nose in it. So you never got caught, but this move, the Savannah, like, can you just kind of describe what is it? Like, this, it was a kiss move. Keep it simple, stupid. Which uh, casinos, they always think when you're taking uh, millions of dollars from them that you have something that's really sophisticated. It was actually the simplest move ever. And uh, what it was is I would bet. Now, this chip here, this white chip, represents $5,000. This red chip is $5. And in, uh, in most casinos in Las Vegas, the, the $5,000 chips and the $5 chips are the same size. So I would make the bet on, on roulette. I would bet $5,000 and $5 on top. And the $5 chip on top would be jutted out slightly like this. So it's jutted out, pointing toward the dealer. Now, when the dealer looks at it, the dealer sees that there is a $5 chip on top and also sees that there's a chip on the bottom, but the dealer cannot see the color of the chip on the bottom. Therefore, the dealer assumes that what, what he or she is looking at is a bet of ten dollars. It's they psychologically are manipulated into thinking that it's a ten dollar bet, okay? Because and they never step out of the box to like you know to look down at the bet because it's all the way down at the bottom of the layout. So what's bet actually is the five thousand and five dollars just like that. So what happens? It's bet on an outside column bet which pays two to one. There's three columns uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the roulette layout where you bet each one pays two to one. They're at the bottom of the layout. If one of my columns wins, I just go, yes, I, I won the bet. Yes, there it is, 10,000 bucks, winner, yes. Now the dealer doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about it because the dealer thinks that it's a $10 bet like this, but it's really a $5,000 and $5 bet like this right so the dealer has uh, the dealer thinks like i'm some kind of nut what's this guy getting all excited about he won ten dollars or twenty dollars two for one right but i have a five thousand dollar chip underneath there and then finally i have to say to the dealer look look at it because the dealer's saying no sir you only have ten dollars there so i said look come down and look at it i'm pointing to it like this look at it and then the dealer would come down and look at it and then boom see it and uh, they get bitten in the nose because there's a five dollar five thousand dollar chip sitting under there it's a ten thousand dollar payoff i mean that's a huge payoff right and you know and and we only did this in uh you know top rate casinos where they had that kind of a maximum where you could bet up to five thousand and get paid ten thousand so the dealer would then tell the supervisor look the guy had a five thousand dollar chip under there and the supervisor would say like why didn't you call it out because they have to alert the pit to these big bets like that uh, before they spin the ball. But obviously the dealer is not calling out the bet because the, the dealer didn't see it. So then they get suspicious. And what do they do, Nick, when they get suspicious, they call surveillance. And surveillance can run it, run it back, right? And, uh, and they can run it right back. And in, within seconds, they can, get, they can see what happened. Was it a legitimate bet or not? And they, they run it back. And sure enough, they see it's a legitimate bet. I made the bet well before the dealer spun the ball, and they have to pay it, 
But what happens when I lose? Now, there's five, there's five thousand five dollars over there. On the top of the wheel is my partner, and my partner is concentrating on the where the uh, when and on what number the ball drops. And my partner, being right on top of the wheel, has an, actually a better angle on the wheel and can actually see it, see where that ball drops a fraction of a second before the dealer does. So if he yells shit or hey or whatever, because people yell and scream in casinos all the time, that's my signal that I got to take that bet off the layout, right? Because I, you know, I don't, I'm not going to let them take it. If they take it, that's $5,000 that are gone, right? So, and, um, and it's not like I had to go out and, and grab it and, you know, do some kind of, uh, you know, violent move to, to go get the chips back. All I had to do was sit very softly, just pick it up. Now, you would think the dealer would catch me every time, but the dealer only actually saw me pick the chips up one of every five times. I mean, we kept records, so we know it's about 20% of the time the dealer would actually catch me. So if the dealer didn't catch me and I just gently picked up the bet, right, and it disappeared in my pocket, right, it was all over with. You know, they that's it. It's done. But when the dealer did catch me, right, it was like they didn't react kindly because it's a flagrant violation when you pull off a, a losing bet before they can take it. And they, they would start, hey, put that back. And then as soon as that happened, right, I would immediately, I had a glass, uh, uh, well, not a coffee cup. I would have a, uh, a cocktail glass in my hand, and I would immediately go into a, a drunk routine like this. What? What happened? What happened? And the dealer is yelling and screaming, you know, put that bet back. Oh, so what do I put back? Do I put back the $5,000 bet with a $5 chip on top? No. I put back $10. You know, usually uh, a supervisor or a pit boss would come running into the pit because the dealer screamed. You know, the, 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 the pit boss wants to know why the dealer screamed. And the dealer explains, yeah, he tried to pick up his bet after it lost. And I'm like this, hey, Mr. Pitbull, how's it going? What's up? Me and you, we're going to go out drinking after this. Come on, come drink it with me, right? And it's only about $10, so they don't ever call surveillance to see what happens. They don't care. It's just $10. But when it wins, when it wins, it's a legitimate bet. But you could only do that, though, once you won. You had, you'd had you leave the table. You'd have to go to another place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not only not only that, but even if the bet lost, I would have we would have to leave the casino or at least, at least come back on a different shift. Why? Because let's say at let's say some pit boss decided uh or somebody in surveillance decided that after they ran the the uh the camp the, the video back and they saw it was a legitimate bet right what happens if they decide well let's see if this guy was in here before how long has he been here right because it's still a suspicious thing that nobody saw the bet get made and then they figure it out and i never gave them that chance we were, we were smart enough to know that one bet, win or lose. I mean, don't forget, Vegas, you got 60, 70 casinos where you can do this.